is one of the top four quarterbacks in the entire National Football League in third down passer rating. Jimmy G delivers in big spots. So all I've been hearing this year, everybody loves Tua. Well, if you love Tua, you got to like Jimmy G. All right? Historic injuries to be concerned about, physical limitations, super accurate, win a lot, both facilitators, not elevators, with brilliant coaches that need great weapons to flourish, but certainly once they have them, win and get them the ball. The only difference is Jimmy G's gotten to a Super Bowl, to a May, may not. Two and Jimmy G are great at the podium. They're alpha males, but great teammates. Don't play with a ton of flair, lot of critics, highly resilient. Don't pout, no agendas, dudes everybody likes, and great distributors. I think the Miami offense and this Niners offense is not better served with quarterbacks with great arms and alpha males and flashy styles. I don't think it is. I mean, San Francisco is so unique. They never throw it deep. They almost never throw it up the sideline. You almost know where the ball's going at all times. And you still can't stop it. It is death by a thousand cuts. And I've seen Jimmy Garoppolo beat Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau in a playoff game and and outplay him in the fourth quarter. I've seen him go to a Super Bowl and outplay Patrick Mahomes for three quarters. In politics and in sports, people have strong opinions. They get embedded in those opinions, and it doesn't matter what you present them. They won't budge. When I suggested and said, of course the Niners are better served, feel bad for Trey Lance getting hurt, but of course they're going to be a much better team with Jimmy Garoppolo, that was met with outrage. You've got to be kidding me. That's not even a debate. That's not even a take. That's just a a fact. Jimmy Garoppolo, no NFL player. There's not a single NFL player that is more disrespected than Garoppolo. The top four passer ratings in this league, on the biggest down in the league, third down, Mahomes, Burrow, Tua, and Jimmy Garoppolo. But everybody now is encouraging each other to support Tua. Nobody's doing that for Garoppolo. And he's a free agent at the end of the year. Go look at the NFL standings. Take a yellow marker out. Start yellowing the teams that would be better this morning if Garoppolo was the quarterback. Gets real close to half the league. Both teams in New York. The Niners are now, with a brilliant coach, a great defense for years, and very good weapons. They are 40-19 and when Garoppolo starts. They're 9-29 and with every other quarterback, and there has been several. We get he's good. Kyle Shanahan gets he's good and talked about it after the W. I think Jimmy's doing a great job. Uh, I, I think Jimmy always has. Uh, when, when Jimmy's um, been healthy out there, we've had our guys around him. I think he plays at a very high level, um, and I think he did that today as good as he has. So very, we're very fortunate to have him. I think it's really understated. Quarterbacks can be uh, finicky, highest paid pros. I think it's really underscored and underrated that the Niners wouldn't let him have a playbook as he rehabbed. He had to go to practice every day, would not give him a playbook. Wouldn't give him first team snaps. Tried to trade him and it went public before the surgery. Had teams interested. He sucked it up. Never bitter. No agenda. I mean, people, people are bitter on Twitter if you, uh, if you don't retweet them. I mean, it, it, this kid is great-looking, great talent, rich, team first. And it's what really makes Tua. Tua's never been bitter, never had an agenda. Tua was not treated well by the previous coach. They brought in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Rumors of Deshaun Watson. Both Tua and Garoppolo are adults. We talk about this all the time. They're adults, and that position demands it. Tip of the cap to both. All right, so we uh, had a 1-1 draw in our World Cup opener against Wales. So I like soccer. Jay mac and I really like soccer. He owns a couple of little soccer teams out there. So soccer fans in the United States have largely been ignored, sometimes bullied by NFL fans, NBA fans, baseball fans, all domestic fans. 
Soccer guys always feel like they get ignored or picked on. So because of that, and it's understandable, no sports base in America, no team, no league, no fans have less self-awareness or less perspective than the United States men's national team fans. So let's add some perspective to that discouraging draw. Number one is we have the second youngest team in the entire World Cup. Young teams don't win the World Cup. Um, Secondly, we outplayed Wales for about 70% of the match. Because we're a young team, they usually bring great energy and then make mistakes. You saw both. First half, dominated. Incredible passion. Chatty, chippy, USA. And then a defensive lapse, a mistake later in the match. No country is also ever satisfied with their roster or their coach unless they win the World Cup. So there's been some grumblings about who was left off the roster. Greg Berhalter certainly has his critics. But the people that I trust in soccer, that I read, that I lean on, that I text and ask questions, felt we were going to struggle to get scoring opportunities in this match, and it would be very low scoring, that one nothing was probably what you're looking at. So in review, here's what happened. We got one shot on goal and scored. <laughs> I'd say we did pretty well. And we had a defensive lapse with the second youngest team in the tournament getting a little aggressive late. But England and Iran are next. Both present opportunities. And if you look at the history of our country in the World Cup, if we get a draw and we get a win, we usually get out of the group stage. And we got the draw. But in America, we do not like ties and we do not like draws. But we had one shot on goal and we got a draw. Argentina lost this morning as a superpower to Saudi Arabia. Things could be far worse. I've, I've always understood United States soccer fans have a chip on their shoulder. I get it. They've been ignored for most of my life and often bullied. And it's a great sport. It's a beautiful game. But sometimes the fans aren't so beautiful and get very defensive and lacked context. Folks, this match from the people I trust was going to be low scoring. Our opportunities were going to be few. The best player on the pitch was the star for Wales, not Pulisic, who, by the way, is going to struggle to stay healthy throughout the tournament, as we have predicted, because he is slight and because people see him is really our gateway to wins. He's it. He's scoring them. He's assisting on them. He's part of them. So I think this morning I feel like, hey, a draw would be fantastic against England, a two-to-one loss would not be that punitive. Like where we're at, we're young, we have skill, we have a ton of energy, we play with passion. But understand, <laughs> this is a young team, and it doesn't matter what sport it is. Young teams do not win NBA championships. Young teams generally don't win World Series, MLS titles, or World Cups. And again, Argentina lost this morning to Saudi Arabia. That would be like in college football if, uh, you know, Georgia lost to uh, Coastal Carolina. You'd be like, whoa, what's, what's going on? I mean, that's a shocker. So it's um, U.S. Captain Tyler Adams after the game. Still positive. I love to hear this despite the draw. Yeah, that's, that's football uh, in the end. I'm very proud of the team with, with the start that we had. We played with a bunch of confidence today, and for a large part of the game, we dominated the game. Um, so for a lot of us, being our first World Cup, you could see an ambitious group, fearless group, and we came after it. Love Tyler Adams. Love the positivity, the optimism. Can't wait for Friday. If you look at the history, a draw and a win usually gets us out of the group. Cross your fingers. But I like what I saw. Except for a couple of moments which you could have predicted because we're really young and full of energy and full of passion. There we go. Just, just a little context. I love optimistic Colin on yeah. a Tuesday morning. Uh, we're, we're facing England next. They hung six on Iran. <laughs> They're not going to hang we can, 
<laughs> if we lose 2-1 and we're competitive, I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. And then you go beat Iran 3 nothing. you try to get in. Okay. And then I like it, it. I said, I thought we would get out of the group stage. I would love one win out of the group stage. That's what this World Cup, to me, it's the pro. We see this in the NBA. Jordan can't beat the Pistons. And he can't beat the Celtics. And then he finally does. Sports is generally a process. There are countries where their best athletes all play football, soccer. Uh, you know, so this is a this is a really young, young team. I was looking over the roster.